Welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I am chatting with Jordan Royburn, founder and editor of The Daily Gold. Now, Jordan, I've gotten a lot of comments regarding the recent M&A in the precious metals space over just the last maybe month or two and how encouraging it really is for the sector to finally see some capital get freed up. Although a lot of the deals have been all shared deals, there has still at least been some action in this space after what seemed like uh, two, three, four years of just not a whole lot happening. Now, one thing that we have talked about a lot is how these deals are still focused a lot on production companies, some of the larger market cap companies, not really trickling down to the exploration companies yet. Let's get your thoughts, though. How how do you take or what do you take away from the increased M&A activity for the precious metal sector? Okay, Corey. Now there's two or three takeaways that I have from that. Number one, you already said it. It's basically larger intermediate companies, intermediate size companies that are combining. So this is not, I mean, if, if people say this is bullish for the juniors, it's, it's not larger companies or seniors acquiring the juniors. So that's not happening yet. So that's something to note. Uh, the second thing is, um, It's good for investors in this sector from the standpoint of there's fewer issuers. Uh, So it's it's better if we continue to see this and we see more consolidation and we see fewer companies in the space that therefore can receive um, more funds. I mean, if you have 50 companies in the space and then suddenly a year from now you have only 45, I'm making these numbers up, then that's you know, more money is going to go into the uh, the average company just by nature that there's fewer companies. So from that standpoint, it's good. And I think about that, Corey, because one reason in the last bull market why the the gold stocks, including the juniors, underperformed the metals is it was such a great bull market for the metals that this spawned too many new companies. They're just coming out of everywhere. And to my original point, when you have too many new issuers, that's fewer companies that the average person can buy. So, I mean, I know this is not like a shocking observation. It's rather simple, but that's how I think about it. It's good to see consolidation from the standpoint that there's fewer companies out there. But like for us who invest in juniors, I don't, I mean, it it doesn't mean anything yet for the sector because Uh, None of these deals were in the junior space. So that's how I look at it. Hey, that's fair. And you know what? A lot of people do want to try to carry that down to the juniors. But quite frankly, over the last couple of months, there hasn't really been any just pure exploration story, one that isn't in production that got purchased. The last one that comes to mind, honestly, to me is Barkerville. And no one was really happy about that deal after Osisco Gold Royalties took them over. But at least that was uh, more of an exploration play. Jordan, what do you think it's going to take to actually get some of that money trickling down into the juniors, into the exploration plays? Is it going to be a pop higher in the gold price? Is it going to just take some time? Or quite frankly, is it going to take one of these companies finally dipping their toe into an exploration company to almost uh, force other companies to go further down the food chain? I think it's probably going to be the the bull market making another leg higher. Um, I, I would I would say when GDX closes above 31 uh, on a weekly basis and you get that break out of the 2016 high, you know that will um, usher in a new period of strength for the large stocks in the sector. And look, the market, whether it's a gold market, the tech market, or you know whatever. The market loves growth. The market rewards growth. The market wants growth. So when you see that big breakout in the sector, and you know, I'm on record as saying I think GDX will break its 2016 high. Um, well, I can't say before gold because gold already broke its 2016 high, but GDX will break that 2016 high before gold breaks above 1550. And I think when that happens, assuming that happens, you know, the gold price will probably follow that. Then sentiment in the sector gets bullish during a breakout, which that happens and it doesn't stop the major breakout. At that point, these larger companies, 
things are going well, but they're going to say, you know, gee, look at our stock price is really strong and, you know, we got to buy something. So that's my inclination, but it, it remains to be seen, Corey. We'll, we'll see what happens. You know, maybe it, it's another company buying something and, and making a significant acquisition of a junior and then maybe large companies follow that. That's a possibility. But me, I, I just I, I think it's going to be more market based. I think it's going to be the market starting that next leg higher. And at some point after that, that's when, you know, these board members for these companies are going to say, we really need to buy something now. Like this is a bull market. People want growth, you know, time to get bigger again. So to me, that's when it'll happen. Okay, fair enough. You know what? I've heard that from a couple of people saying that it will be a lot metal determined too. When the metal really starts to break out, then the companies will be forced a bit lower down in that food chain. Let's also talk about the U.S. dollar. There's not much more to talk about when it comes to gold. Gold's been relatively boring over the last little while, but the dollar's been catching my eye. It's been moving fairly aggressively down all month. It started off uh, December right around, let's say, well, just above 98 and right now it's trading right around 96 and a half. It's broken below the 200 day moving average, below the 50 day moving average. What's your assessment of the dollar here? Is this a breakdown? We can't quite call it a breakdown yet, although it looks like we're seeing the early signs of a breakdown. Um, and by the way, the dollar actually bounced uh, at the 400 day moving average. I just noticed that looking at this chart. But We'll focus on the 50 and 200 day, Corey. And what is troubling from the dollar for the dollar is if you look at the action over the last uh, three, four months or so, you know, we have this potential double top and then we have a ominous lower high that happened, which almost looks like another double top that happened in November, those two highs. Then we have a bigger decline down to the 400 day. But what's happening is the 50 day is now turning down. The 200 day isn't sloping down yet, but it looks to me pretty soon like we could see the 50 day go below the 200 day and the 200 day is just at about 9740. This action over the coming days and weeks, if we see a weak rally in the dollar and it starts to roll over again below the 200 day, that could set up the 50 day going below the 200 day which is pretty bearish when the market is below that. And so that would happen if this, this rally in the dollar fades and goes back below the 200 day. So, the, I mean, that's something to look for over the next month or two. And then breaking below the 400 day, which is at about 96.40, um, you know, that would kind of confirm that the dollar is in a new leg lower. So long story short, Corey, for the dollar, I would say, we can't call it a breakdown yet, but the next couple weeks or next month or two are going to be very interesting for the dollar because if it doesn't show any strength and it just kind of fails to rebound much and it kind of goes sideways, that would be ominous and that could be setting up a sharper decline at the end of winter into spring. And is that going to strictly benefit the precious metals? I know they can be inversely correlated. They're not all the time inversely correlated, but sometimes if, say, the dollar is breaking down, that can really benefit at least the precious metals. Well, I think it goes to what we were talking about last week with the uh, commodities breaking the downtrend, the CCI, the equal weight basket breaking the uh, downtrend. So first and foremost, I would say it's actually – I mean, I, th I think it's bullish for the broad commodity sector, not specifically precious metals. I, it's, it's interesting, Corey, because if you look at the action in the dollar, I mean, the, you would think gold would be a little bit stronger. But if you back away and look at like a six month or a 12 month view, we know that gold has performed very, very well, you know, with the dollar in this flat to slightly up market. So that's how I look at it. But then again, if you throw in the gold stocks, you can say the gold stocks, they're the ones that are that are acting, you know, as precious metal should, given this weakness in the dollar. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not really sure who's going to benefit first. But, you know, like we've talked about in, in recent weeks, Corey, like I don't know what is going to be the, the catalyst or what's going to be the reason that we see gold stocks break out next year. I mean, it, it could be 
you know, does the Fed have to cut rates again? Uh, or the dollar breaks lower, and, and you couple that with these Fed comments that they're basically not going to hike, inf- they're not going to hike rates anytime soon. And and also their comments that they want inflation above two percent now, and they want it permanently. So you factor in all those things. I'm confident we're going to get a big breakout next year in gold stocks. Uh, so it, it's going to be one of those things. And it, you know, looking at this chart of the dollar, Corey, it, it very well may be the dollar. But I, I do think it's important to note. If we do get this breakdown of the dollar, it's not just going to help precious metals. That's it's going to be bullish for everything in commodities, in my opinion. Okay, hey, that's encouraging because besides the precious metals, the whole commodity sector has really been lagging behind. But it has been interesting to see the dollar start to break down, and maybe that will bring on some inflation, which the Fed also wants. Will the Fed react? But it doesn't seem like the Fed's going to react to save the dollar moving lower. Trump actually wants the dollar lower. It's curious how this is all starting to play out at the end of the year, but I think what is going to be really important is looking to the beginning of 2020 and seeing how the dollar reacts because, hey, that's one of the markets that is moving more aggressively lower. And right now we have a lot of liquidity in the system that seems to be at least holding everything up, if not moving it even higher. Jordan, great chatting with you. Some interesting comments on M&A activity, but also on the dollar. That's going to be a market that you and I watch quite closely early on into next year. Jordan, thanks for your time. Everyone, click that link below. Go visit Jordan's website, thedailygold.com. Have a great rest of your week there, Jordan.